So just to get everybody on the same page, there was a huge earthquake, but there's earthquakes all over the world. But this one was 9.0, and it was centered off Fukushima. Created a tsunami. The tsunami also went in and hit the Fukushima prefecture, where the nuclear power plant is, head on, with uh, a lot of force behind it, and up to 70 feet in some areas. It then updated the nuclear power plant itself, and it wrecked carnage. It flowed freely around that site, and it wrecked more carnage. And there's no uh, doubt that that entire site was inundated with water. And the people went in after, and you can see in the dry cast areas that uh, the wreckage is in there, of course, because the wreckage in this area is, is at a ferocious. You can't swim across something like that. That's uh, flowing very strongly. Um, you can see the background is actually higher. And it, this is the back of uh, the reactor pumping house, and you can see that's destroyed uh, from wreckage. Now, this is the four reactors. You can see three of them got their tops blown up, and so that was huge explosions. And But there was four explosions right there. And there's about a thousand different kinds of radioactive material that got released. A thousand different types of, uh, types of isotopes got released. And you got a nuclear accident and a tsunami to clean up. The nuke stuff has to go into bags, particularly, but there's 30 million tons of nuclear waste in Fukushima alone. That's uh, smoke in, and is no good for anything, of course, and there's dead bodies among that. It's a never-ending disaster. And TEPCO, and now the Japanese government themselves, had created a law where no one can scrutinize what they're saying or counter say anything about it. So they even paid $12 million yen was being spent by the city because they were going to be burning that carnage that you see, the 30 million tons. Now, after this accident, they tried using helicopters, dipping it in the salt water, and that didn't work. Uh, there was a meltdown in reactor number one in five hours. Reactor three melted earlier than reported also. This was a explosion at the number one reactor. And reactor number one's fuel rods were completely melted by May the 17th, 2001. This is another shot of that detonation for number one reactor. And that's what it looks like on the top of unit one. And you can actually see the detonation in this picture. On the roof of it, you can see it's total carnage. And a little closer up shot for everybody. You can see the building is totally destroyed. But reactor two had cracked containment vessel that allowed the release directly from the melted nuclear core. The radioactive plume was blown south at that time, they said, on that particular day. Now, because that was a meltdown, the radiation never stopped coming out of there. They say it went south. 1.6 billion becquels of radioactive material was released from the number two reactor late Sunday. That's June the 20th, 2011. Now, radioactive material being uranium and plutonium, because that's what nuclear power plants run on. They don't run on cesium or bananas or iodine. They run on plutonium and uranium. Of course, this is unit two. You can see complete carnage. And TEPCO analysts had said that 94% of the nuclear fuel had melted in reactor number three on May the 26th. So that's one, two, and three so far. And here's a good shot of Unit 3. You will find a link under the video of these pictures. You can download them yourself from TEPCO's site. And this was a fireball from Unit 3. So once again, we're just making sure everybody's on the right page. Because these were huge explosions. And on top of these buildings were storage pools of fuel rods, 1,535 and there's 80 rods in a bundle, that's 122,000 rods that are being atomized and aerosoled and spread all over that site. Is what you need to keep in mind. This is Unit 3. You can see it blew its top. 
and this is MOX fuel. The MOX fuel is two million times more dangerous than any other reactor on the planet. And Chernobyl was one third the size of these reactors, and you can do the math. It was a 30% meltdown also at Chernobyl. This was a 100% meltdown in this reactor again. We'll keep going. Unit 4 pool, according to the Fukushima 50, boiled dry, raising the specter of a nuclear fission chain reaction in number 4. So here's a picture of Unit 4. I don't know where the pools are, but um, it would be hard to pick them out in that picture. Now, that picture, once again, you can download it from under my page from TEPCO's website itself. That's Unit 4. And the damaged fuel rods are cracked and leaking radioactive gases in Fukushima Unit 4. So there's probably a pool down there somewhere. And the wires appear trapped in the racks. And you can see the pictures that uh, fit into that. You know, the, the pools are full. Each of those handles you see, there's 80 rods in a bundle that connects to that handle. And so those rods are like cigarettes in a cigarette pack. And if they're bent or twisted, and you break them, they release gases, and that's how they blew up in the first place. Enormous amount of plutonium at number four spent fuel pool. That was April 13, 2011. And that, of course, you can see the building is destroyed. And you can see June of 20, 2012, Unit 4 had major impulse sound and damage to the roof on March the 14th. And once again, here's a good shot. You can see how much damage is there. It's, it's through the whole building. It's a complete detonation, if not a nuclear explosion, obviously. This is not just earthquake damage. They said it was fires already at number four, and that the rods had went dry. Now, BBC and CNN and everybody else came out with these pictures and these videos saying this was the inside of that building. Can you imagine that this is inside of that building, that reactor that had a nuclear detonation? And so they tried to sell number four for some reason. But there's an enormous amount of plutonium in number four. And the pool is cracked and leaking. Now this is an interesting one because you can see it looks like there's a net but if you zoom right in with the same pictures, you ended up with no net and a pool that's dry. As you can see, this was the one they had up on the site. And that's the pool. They had extracted from the original one. I went in with the original one. Now look at this site here. Does that look anything like that pool? Does that look anything like that? So that net is not even real. Uh, Unit 4 caught on fire today. That was May the 4th, 2011. Once again, this is a zoom-in shot from TEPCO's site of Unit 4. You can see how much carnage is there. So it did blow up, right? It doesn't look like that on the inside, like BBC had tried to show us a few weeks back. It doesn't look like that on the inside, like all the mainstream media tried to show us a few weeks back. And I don't think, once you see this, that you'll disagree. Uh, the Cobalt 60 was at 1.4 billion becquels a kilogram in the fuel pool. So it showed a chain reaction also went on. It was a nuclear explosion. The nuclear engineer says an enormous amount of plutonium number four spent fuel in danger catching fire. Japan Times. The walls are cracked below ground of Fukushima reactor buildings as if the damage above the ground isn't enough. And you can see this signature, heat signature of the buildings that there's, you know, if the buildings are in bad shape. This was from uh, Japan's TV. Now, reactor number five and six were not in cold shutdown after the quake, which is what they're employing, a report by a UN nuclear industry and cooling at the spent fuel pool number five stopped until the cables were installed. So there was definitely trouble there. And that's the buildings, five and six, in front of you. And there was enough cesium found near the drainage gates at reactor number five, they couldn't get near it. The level was just too high, 2,300 times uh, what they consider even reasonable. This is the pump houses out in front of number five reactor. 
And this is the pump house in front of number six reactor. And the cesium rises by five and six discharge at the highest level in months. And so that was on April, I'm sorry, September the 23rd, 2012. Still having huge issues from all the radioactivity all around them. You can never work in that reactor five and six again. This was damaged out in front of it, um, to the left of it and to the right of it, or left and right. And, and uh, you can see in this shot here how much damage from the tsunami came along. The pump houses were taken out right away. I should have mentioned earlier, but the cooling systems at number five stopped working on Wednesday afternoon. That was uh, come out March the 23rd. Now, you can see the water inside of uh, buildings five and six, and it didn't, in the pictures that are below, you can download them yourself, it shows these pictures as five and six. We don't know what's what, 100%. But we do know that four of the five emergency diesel generators on unit five and six were inoperable after the tsunami, and they only had one air-cooled emergency diesel generator on unit six continue to function and supply the electrical power to unit six and later to unit five. Now how would you take, did you ever see these generators? They're massive. There's radiation everywhere, there's carnage, people don't even know if their families got swept away and so I find that story hard to believe. Unit five has been shut down and is in an outage since January the 3rd, 2001. But apparently they weren't in a cold shutdown. There's conflict and stories about that. And the fuel had been loaded into the reactor. This was uh, August 14, 2010. But let's keep going here that the, you know, the buildings have water in them. So these buildings are no longer functional. You can't just restart up like you hear the media talking about they're gonna restart five and six. They couldn't do it. They couldn't, they can't work in there, see, because it's all radiated water. And TEPCO used radioactive water from reactors five and six to spray through Fukushima plant over 100 tons a day. This was really highly radioactive water. And it's all through the plants in five and six. So they were never going to get that open again. I don't know what the media reported that they were talking about it. The walls are cracked below the ground at the Fukushima reactor buildings, right? The buildings are, are destroyed many different ways but not just from all this mad water that's in the building that's radioactive it's it's insane so all the pipes and even if you pump the water and everything inside is radioactive right do you get it because radioactive works that way where you can actually uh, infect metal with radioactive uh, properties and they become radioactive themselves but Fukushima reactor number five and six are now in crisis. It was October 24, 2011, and CCM outside was uh, up 100%. So it was in, it, like I'm saying all along here, I'm trying to show you to make you understand that five and six also are in desperate heart attack modes. And they got all that radiation all around them from all those explosions you watched early. They got all that water all through the, uh, the buildings. You know, we got the, you can download the video or the pictures yourself from the link on the low, below. Um, I wanted to touch on this one, that if number four collapses, Japan will be evacuated. And there's a better shot of that same picture. That's number four. Now remember, they showed us that on BBC recently and said, look at it, how nice it is and everything else in there. That's the complete opposite, obviously. But Japan was considered moving their capital away from Tokyo. Think about that one. And I want you to think about uh, cesium-137 is code word for plutonium and uranium because that's what nuclear reactors, and they got a shelf life. Uh, uranium is 4.5 billion years, 234 and 235, and uh, 238, which is the byproduct, the weaponized, uh, what we call yellow cake a lot of the times, but it's actually used for uh, bullets. It's uranium-238, and so that gives off uh, alpha, beta, gammas that are changed and completely different than uranium ever was before because it went through a chain reaction. So here's the forecast. You can see yourself. This is France's Institute for Radiological Protection and Nuclear Safety, March 19, 2011. You can watch that and make up your own mind about the particles, but we got a lot more than that. 
Fukushima problems are causing concern in the U.S. as the radiation crosses the Pacific. And, of course, the EPA said, no comment. Of course, they grandfathered in 65,000 chemicals in 1981 when they hung their shingle out, so what do you expect? Rain out of hot particles from radioactive clouds to continue for another year, see? But actually, it goes up into the atmosphere, up into the ionosphere and the stratosphere, and it stays up there for years, and it keeps raining out as it falls back down. But the U.S. government model of the Fukushima cesium-137 particles covering the northern hemisphere is really something else. And so this starts, and there's a date on it for each movement of the Earth. And you can count away at it. It's pretty fascinating. This is about 35, I'm sorry, 40-day projection. And so after 40 days, it stops. But you can be sure the radiation didn't, right? So here's some other models with 180-hour forecast because of the jet streams. Even at 100 miles an hour, we'll land on your coastline in 72 hours because that's 2,400 miles per day at 100 miles an hour into the jet streams. And that's why you see these models. They're well-known models. And North America received an incredible amount uh, of fallout. The, this one here was a bit of a controversy also, and because uh, it shows, uh, this one is correct, right? This one shows 36 hours. It reaches the coastline of Canada and the United States. And so you got a pretty good jet stream that month. So this was a study that used tracers emitted from Fukushima at Diachi's nuclear power plant. Scientists, average person in Seattle, breathed in 10 hot radioactive particles a day during April. June 5, 2001. Now, when Japan released the first of their fire balloons that they sent over with bombs attached to them on November 3, 1944, they were found in Alaska, Washington, Oregon, California, Arizona, Idaho, Montana. In other words, that's where the plumes will land to. Top U.S. official raised the possibility of a widespread nuclear fallout March the 16th. I'm sorry, March the 18th? March the 16th, five days after. And once again, you can see the modeling of the plumes coming in the ocean. It's quite hideous. No matter which angle you come at it from, these models, even NOAA, shows that the plumes are um, much faster than anybody was led to believe, much more potent than anybody can, can conceive inside of these, a lot of these studies that were hit away. Fukushima ocean plume hit Canada six months ago. Now, because the rain picks it up and brings it here quicker, the thousands of miles of clouds on the ocean every day can get it over here a lot faster. It can be thrown into the jet stream and then falls out as it's coming here, so you start seeing it showing up. But as the ocean becomes, because it doesn't stop hemorrhaging into the ocean, now, uranium-234 was d detected in Hawaii, Southern California, and Seattle, April 9, 2011. April 15th is showed the April 16th forecast, radioactive clouds stretching from Texas to Canada. Well, Washington Post says it's a total disaster. The ocean is polluted, and up to 3,000 miles offshore, kilometers rather, is probably going to be polluted too. And of course, that's because the plume is heading over here. And the models are all out there. It's just uh, the media won't show it to you. Boing Boing's not going to show it to you. Deep Sea News is not going to show it to you. Banana head out there with 76 million bananas worth of radiation coming out of the ocean. Not going to show it to you. But look at this article here, August the 16, 2011. 1,500 atoms of radioactive sulfur per meter, cubic meter of air, in California. And so California gets a lot of us, is what you got to realize. It loads up in California for some reason. But it goes all over, like the model showed you earlier. It goes all over the place, but... California really sucks it up, apparently. And so you can't get away from that. Just walk out and walk through one cubic meter of air, and you're breathing in these hot radioactive particles. These are known as buckyballs. And there's a link below about that and how there's little nuclear engines because they sprayed salt water. And that's what they mean by radioactive sulfur. This is an extraordinary, unbelievable event on this planet.
This is a absolutely completely life changing event because everybody getting a dose. You can't avoid it. If you went at your door, you breathe air, your children are walking to school, the police are giving you tickets, your governments that are working, working, you know, walking to work or getting into the cars, they got to walk through a whole lot of cubic meters of air and sort of breathing all these buckyballs in. And their children are breathing it in while they're walking to school and playing in the schoolyards. And so everybody, instead of being told and warned about it, they made into it a national secret and they kept the silence. August the 17th, 360 plus atoms of radioactive sulfur per day may have been hailed by the Californians, which is nothing 360 atoms when there's a 1500 in a cubic meter. But whatever, hot particles bombarded the west coast of US and Canada and contaminated farms and food and there's radioactive debris island twice the size of Texas crossing the Pacific, December 27, 2011. 120 billion becquels of plutonium. 76 trillion becquels of neptunium. First released, released in the first 100 hours. October the 15, 2001. That finally came out. And so those plumes came across the ocean, no one got a chance to know. Again, because they made it a national secret. They told their own families that day, don't be out. But they never told you. And, of course, nobody knows how many people have killed themselves from Fukushima. I know there was one man got interviewed. And I watched his wife burn up on TV because she was an evacuee and couldn't, couldn't deal with it. And just couldn't deal with it. And a top Japanese official was found hanging, had been the Deputy Minister for Disaster Reconstruction. And who knows what that was all about. He's the guy who gives out the contracts. And we have a peer review study based upon a two-week release from Fukushima only that tells the whole story, but it's only based upon cesium-137. And the reactors run on uranium and plutonium. Uranium-234, 235, and plutonium-239. They have a very, very long half-life. And whatever a half-life is, you should always multiply it by 10. So if cesium's 30 years, it's 300 years. Take care, folks. See you tomorrow.